Howdy there folks, this is Lapidary Dave, and in this video I want to share some videos and pictures of homemade lapidary machines. Most of the content I'll be sharing I got from Facebook and Instagram, thanks to some really kind people allowing me to share their ideas. And others I found on lapidary forums and just from searching on Google. If you are into homemade lapidary machines, check out my last video where I use a drill press to run lapidary flat laps, lapidary grinding and polishing wheels, and where I also chat about using a drill press to work as a lapidary saw. Before we take a look, I just want to remind you folks that there's always a way to find a way to hurt yourself using any machine. So be very careful when using motors, tools, and machines in ways they weren't necessarily intended to be used. With that being said, I don't intend you folks to go out there and make exactly what you see in this video, but more or less to inspire you folks who really want to make your own machines, who might not necessarily have the budget to buy big fancy name brand machines. Believe it or not, I know some old timers that modify their machines right when they buy the big name machines or prefer to use their own homemade machines over what they can buy at the store, especially when it comes to lapidary saws and tumbling. Anywho, I'm so close to 10,000 subscribers thanks to you beautiful people out there. I appreciate every single one of you who watch my videos, and I'm super thankful for everybody that subscribed over the last couple years. It really means a lot to me. I started this channel in order to help people, and it's really a big blessing to be able to have helped hundreds of you folks out there. In this video, if you have any questions that you might have from seeing any pictures or videos, feel free to leave your questions in the comment section and I will answer them all. Anyway, I hope you enjoy. Be safe and get your thinking cap on because there are some really great ideas in these pictures and videos. All right, this first video is from a very kind gentleman on Facebook. He has some kind of flex shaft attachment that goes onto a rotary tool. And he has a cutoff disc attached to the flex shaft attachment. He puts a pan over that and he made himself a cute little trim saw. I believe he says it's three fourths of an inch. And uh, even though there's no audio here of the machine, it does sound quite powerful and it gets the job done pretty easily and quick. He rigged up some kind of plastic to keep himself from getting wet and his watering system is like a little cup with a little spout. This is what people call super grinders. They are tile saw blades stacked up on a motor. Some people use motors like this where other people actually put them on arbors like this. I've never personally used one, but I've met people who've used them and I've seen them used in the past. Supposedly, they work a lot more aggressively than traditional hard grinders. But in my opinion, they seem like they would be more expensive. The blades are kind of expensive. In this picture, these are like AliExpress blades or like Wish.com blades. In this picture, someone is using an oscillating hand sander uh, with diamond pads to polish slabs. You can buy hook and loop diamond pads all over the place. I believe this is homedepot.com. You can. This is a seven pack. You can get multiple grits and packages really, really cheap, even cheaper than what you see here. The person in this picture is using like some kind of chemical sprayer as the watering system. I'm sure it's clean. You're not going to want to use it with residual chemicals. This is the same gentleman that made that little flex shaft trim saw. In this video, he's using pieces of bamboo, what looks like hot glue, some springs, and little clamp feet to push down on his slabs for like hands-free like slab polishing. I really like this idea, especially if I had a much larger flat lap, because sometimes this can take, you know, almost an hour. In this video, my good friend Bradley Jean, who is a master artist on the Navajo Nation there in Arizona, is making a forming, like, block out of a stump. You know, you could buy this stuff 
but people use these for like making conches and stuff. My grandfather actually uses a stump for his forming block too. It's not that just, you know, it can be pricey, but when you're out there on the reservation in the middle of, you know, seemingly nowhere Arizona, there's no like Harbor Freights or anywhere to buy those things affordably. This is a great video of somebody using a corded hand drill as a flat lap. This person has even a way to adjust the speed. This person is using some kind of like pipe vice or pipe clamp. I don't know what these things are called really, but I see them everywhere. And he has them wrapped around the, the trigger of the drill and he uses a screwdriver to adjust it and then adjust the speed of the um, yeah corded drill press flat lap. I like the corded version because you're not going to run out of battery and for the most part even on cheaper drill presses, excuse me, even cheaper hand drills, it's more powerful than uh, the battery versions. He's got a nice little irrigation system up there. Don't really know what's going on but this would be very easy and effective to make if you are interested. Nice variable speed, especially if you're going to be polishing with like cerium or aluminum oxide, slower speeds are better. Here's a photo of the way this person has it rigged up at an angle. So this picture is a picture of someone putting a trim saw blade directly onto a motor. I see a lot of folks doing this overseas. It seems like a very common thing. Excuse the potato quality of these pictures. I couldn't get them in any better quality. But in these pictures, somebody rigged up like a wooden housing. Does it hold water and oil? I'm sure it does. Um, again, I see these overseas a lot, especially in the Philippines and Myanmar and stuff. This is something that really, really interested me. Even though this is like a cheap little variable speed buffer thing, on one side it has a chuck that you could put different attachments. In this case, he has a little cutoff disc. He's probably trimming up stones. But on the other side, he has what looks like a diamond impregnated resin wheel. A two inch Bigfoot diamond impregnated resin wheel to be exact. The Bigfoot machine used to be made by Diamond Pacific and it was the smallest of their machines, even smaller than the Pixie. I don't know if they still make those little wheels, but this was super cool and he has a saw and lap dairy machine right there. Good to go. Uh, yeah, I thought that was awesome. All right, these are flat lap discs which are mounted directly to motors. In a similar fashion, people were just attaching those trim saw blades. People do attach flat lap discs directly to the motors. I see this done overseas a lot, uh, especially in like India, Sri Lanka, you know, Myanmar and other places. Sometimes they do make more appealing versions of this. And if you'd want to make one yourself, I suggest checking out this video. This gentleman, who I believe is from Brazil, is making them to sell. And then there's this video here. If you don't want to make them yourself, there's someone on eBay that's been selling these for a while. And for 400 bucks, it pretty much is the best deal in eight inch flat laps. Mr. Lopaki, this gentleman here is a master lapidary and he has a video where he chats about his homemade flat lap, which is attached directly to a motor. And he has some kind of guide that he uses to get a perfect girdle on his stones. I highly suggest checking out Mr. Lopaki's stuff and subscribing. This is something neat. Uh, using flat laps on a potter's wheel. I actually see that done quite a bit. And this is somebody who turned a food processor into a flat lap. They were talking about uh, having a hard time getting their cabs flat, so they turned their food processor into a flat lap. I actually see that done quite a bit. This is the first picture that popped up, so I figured I'd share it. And I plan on buying one from my local thrift store to make a video of. Some of my favorite homemade lapidary machines are tumblers. You can see here somebody using a drill and a vise for their tumbler. This is just goofy. Someone has a tire, uh, yeah, and rigged up a tumbler out of a tire and some kind of motor. 
in a lot of people's opinions in the comments of this video it was spinning way too fast but it is just hilarious and too fast for what is it gonna overgrind something can you just check on it more is it gonna just not work for softer materials all right here is another homemade tumbler it looks like a chicken rotisserie motor or like a hot dog carousel or something uh, and a bunch of paint cans and then my number one favorite DIY tumbler uh, the treadmill tumbler it's just hilarious and in close second place my second favorite tumbler the redneck tumbler attached directly to a tire this was actually a meme on Facebook and I've seen other memes say that this is actually a washing machine but it was just too funny not to show you fine folks Anyway, that's all the pictures and all but one of the video clips I wanted to share with you folks. The last video clip is from my friend Michael, and it is his take on the drill press flat lap. I wanted to share it because he uses certain attachments which make taking on and off the different grits a lot easier than what I shared in the video before this one. I wanted to thank all of you folks again for subscribing. We're like 20 something away from getting to 10,000. Couldn't do it without you folks. Feel free to leave any comments or questions you might have down in the comments section. And until next time, my friends, I love you and I'll see you soon. All right, so here's what I use to make a drill pet press lapidary uh, machine here. So I use a 3 8 to 5 8 inch arbor adapter. Then I use one of these adjustable things for an angle grinder. I really don't know what that's called. And I start on an 80 grit um, 4 inch lapping plate.